Here is a riddle for you. The year is 2222. The sky is blue, the oceans are clean. Nobody's going hungry, nobody's burning fossil fuels. How did we get here? Confused. Let's work it out. Rewind to the present. Oh dear, plenty to sort out. Climate change, biodiversity loss, lack of food security, pollution. Who can solve the global challenges of the 21st century? Well, here's a politician. It's her job to decide and implement policies for the benefit of citizens. The solution to global problems is partly in her hands, but she's not an expert in every field. She needs advisors. Look, here's a scientist. She has reliable technical knowledge, and she works to make discoveries and to try out new solutions. But the scientist and the politician still need help to bring countries together. Ah, here's a diplomat. He has international experience and cultural sensitivity. He finds common interests between countries and fosters collaborations. He's also part of the solution, if he coordinates his work with others. But wait, there are more. Concerned members of society, activists, intellectuals, business people, each doing their part to shape the future. So, back to our riddle. In the year 2222, who saved us? Only a combination of policy, science, international cooperation and society can solve our global problems. The sum of these efforts is what we call science diplomacy. Together, they form a shared method for bringing society into the best possible future. Science diplomacy is a collaborative and international approach to tackle grand societal challenges. What does this cooperation look like in practice? For example, during a pandemic, scientists produce evidence and recommendations to government officials, who must make decisions regarding public health, travel and trade, among other questions. At the same time, diplomats keep open efficient channels of communication which aid the exchange of information between experts across the globe. Now, consider the global action on climate change. Knowledge shared by the world's climate scientists provides diplomats with important evidence to negotiate international agreements to reduce emissions. So, in practice, science diplomacy involves a wide range of activities, combining foreign policy and scientific endeavour. The European Union can be a leader by strengthening science diplomacy to address global challenges. This can be done, for example, by fostering spaces for interaction between scientists, diplomats, policymakers and society who must all work together, sharing their influence and expertise. During this process, new professionals must be trained, such as science advisors to governments and science attachés at embassies, to facilitate the exchange of specialist knowledge. In the future, when we tell the story of how current global challenges were addressed, we will remember leaders of different countries coming together, taking decisions supported by reliable scientific information. We will look back at the process of science diplomacy.